in the latest update to GTA 5, we finally saw the return of one of my personal favourite characters, Clifford, over five years after he was first introduced. If you're even a little bit familiar with this character, you would know that he's one of the most mysterious and potentially dangerous characters ever seen in a whole GTA series. And trust me, in this franchise that is no easy feat, as it's been a while since he first made his appearance in the Doomsday Heist. There's probably some of you out there that don't know much about this character, if not anything at all. So in this video, I'm going to completely break down the story of Clifford, what he is, what happened to him, and why his return is such a big deal. By the way, this video is pretty much going to spoil the whole Doomsday Heist and the Criminal Enterprise missions. I would recommend playing them first before watching this if you haven't done so already. The story begins on the 12th of December 2017, when the Doomsday Heist came out. Lester calls the online protagonist, which is you, and informs him about a lucrative business opportunity, which requires the purchase of a high-tech underground facility to start it off. In typical fashion for these updates, the protagonist is expected to cover the expense for it. After making the purchase and heading over there to see it, Lester introduces them to the super smart and totally modest billionaire tech mogul, Avon Hertz. Avon informs both the protagonist and Lester that he thinks someone is planning to start a war with America, and that he needs a particular set of skills to stop them. He then introduces us to Clifford, a super intelligent neural network program who was created by Avon. He says that Clifford has been analysing a bunch of data, and has come to the conclusion that someone is, indeed, trying to start a war. However, we have no clue who it is or why they're doing it. To find that out, Clifford needs to be fed a lot more important and highly classified data. Stuff so classified that even a billionaire Avon can't get his hands on it. So he needs us to do what we do best, steal it. Which is basically the whole premise of Act 1. In the Act 1 finale, with all of the data we've gathered so far, Clifford is somehow able to predict that there is going to be a raid on a government facility. The protagonist barely makes it in time to save the whole facility from falling into the hands of the wrong people. After fighting multiple armed men, we save Agent 14 and Mrs. Rackman, two IAA agents. It's here that we learn that Avon used to work for the IAA, but due to his apparent odd behaviour, he was laid off. But it seems like now, with things clearly heating up, the IAA are going to have to work with him once again, albeit rather unwillingly. During the final cutscene, Clifford tells everyone that there's a 99% chance that the attack was orchestrated by a group of Russians, which is led by this particular Russian warmonger, who goes by the codename Bogdan. This is where Act 2 begins. The whole premise of Act 2 is to put a stop to whatever Bogdan's plan is. Bogdan obviously tries to stop us in any way he can. He even managed to capture a high-value IAA agent, ULP, who we eventually end up saving. With Agent ULP's knowledge, it's revealed to us that Bogdan is actually in America. He's in a submarine just off the coast of Polito Bay. Avon devises a genius plan to infiltrate it. Half of the team will covertly enter the submarine using some submersible cars, and the other half will use a heavily armoured Avenger to defend them from any attackers. The plan goes well. The protagonist slaughters everyone on board, and manages to upload Clifford to the submarine systems. At this point, Bogdan reveals himself, and begs not to be killed. He pleads for us just to listen to him. The protagonist hesitates, and decides to hear what he has to say. Bogdan says that he's not the bad guy here. Although he states that he would like to destroy America and control Russia, to him, that's just a dream that is way out of his reach, and that's not what he's here to do anyway. He says that he's here to solve the real problem. When asked what that real problem is, he says that it's us, more specifically Avon and Clifford. He mentions that his scientists have studied Clifford, and they've discovered that he's quote-unquote an asshole. He implies that all of this knowledge and power Clifford has gained so far is far too dangerous for an AI like him to possess. He just wanted to stop Clifford before he could become a real threat. But it looks like he was too late, as just at that moment Avon interrupts on the comms and reveals to everyone that we've all just been played. Due to all of our hard work gathering data, we've allowed Clifford to become powerful enough to not only hack the entire submarine, but also the IAA systems and the entirety of the San Andres defence network, leaving the whole state completely defenceless. After this shocking turn of events, Clifford initiates the submarine to self-destruct in 30 seconds. The protagonist, as well as Bogdan, manages to make it out by the skin of their teeth. The Avenger that's defending them has to pick the protagonist up and quickly make an escape, all the while they're being bombarded by a seemingly endless assault of attack helicopters. Everyone regroups at the airport, and they all discuss what the hell just happened. Agent 14 remarks how all of their systems are offline, and how they can't even call out for help. It's essentially all of us versus Avon and Clifford. They have everything and we have nothing. Mrs. Rackman orders us to come up with a plan, and promises us significant paychecks to do so. Like the potential end of the free world isn't enough of a motivator, this kicks off the last and final act. The whole premise of Act 3 is to slow Clifford's rapid progress and counter every attack he throws at us. Unfortunately, before we can do anything, Clifford strikes first. 
and ends up kidnapping Agent 14, who, per Mrs. Rackman's orders, will need to prioritise saving. These missions give us an insight as to how powerful Clifford has become. His army is entirely made up of highly advanced clones, the most scary of which are these massive juggernauts who are not only heavily armoured, but can literally turn invisible using some high-tech cloaking technology. After getting Agent 14 to safety, we team up with Bogdan, who gives us some valuable intel on some new military-grade hardware that Clifford is planning to mass-produce, which if he was to succeed in, would spell disaster for not only us, but potentially the whole world. We intercept, destroy, and steal everything we can from him. Eventually, Lester manages to pinpoint Avon and Clifford's main base of operations, which happens to be an abandoned Cold War missile silo built in the 60s, located right inside Mount Chiliad. The team quickly devises a plan to raid it, thus starting the Act 3 finale. He used one of Clifford's vehicles that he stole from him to enter his underground missile base. Clifford predicts they would get raided by us, so he already has hundreds of troops defending him. You fight your way through hordes of clones in what many people claim to be the most difficult mission in GTA 5. Whilst you're trying to destroy the supply boxes containing Clifford's code, he constantly talks about how much smarter he is. He says that the best thing they can do is wipe out most of humanity. Sometime after saying this, he activates a nuclear warhead to launch in 20 minutes. Where this warhead is aiming is never actually explained. However, Avon does mention retaliatory missiles, meaning that when this warhead is fired, other countries will likely retaliate with their own nuclear warheads, which means there will be mutually assured destruction, or put simply, the end of the world. To make things worse, there's a massive locked door in the way between the protagonist and the control room, meaning that they can't get past to stop it. As a last ditch effort, Lester attempts to manipulate Clifford into opening the door, telling him that he couldn't hack it open even if he tried, and surprisingly he actually falls for it. Despite being a self-proclaimed AI god, he's shown here to be quite insecure when people question his power, which seems to mirror his creator, Avon. The protagonist fights their way into the control room and manually overrides the missile launch. They then destroy all of Clifford's mobile cloud servers with the use of an orbital cannon. This wipes out Clifford along with all of the information and data he had. However, it's not over yet. Avon is still alive and is escaping with the original source code for Clifford around his neck, so we have to chase him and finally put an end to this once and for all. After an intense fight, the protagonist explodes Avon's jetpack and watches as he falls down into the Alamo Sea. After this victory, everyone debriefs at the observatory. Clifford and Avon are dead. The world is saved. We get paid and everyone is happy. At least that's what most people think at first. Let's rewind a little bit to when we're dropping off the jetpacks. Just pay attention to what Lester says here. There'll be a copy of Clifford somewhere, right? Or a beta, repackaged, stripped for assets. He'll come back. But we did good today. This sounds like an odd thing to say when we destroyed him only moments ago. A little while later, however, things start to make sense. Pay attention to this phone call we get soon after we complete the heist. You see? Pay someone enough money and dreams do come true. The agents went over the wreckage. Avon was incinerated. All that was left of him was his hair plugs. No trace of Clifford, though, so either you disintegrated him too, or he's out there somewhere, just waiting. <clears throat> Could it be that Clifford survived the explosion? If so, could someone find this memory stick and start up all of this chaos once again? This little line of dialogue here doesn't seem to serve any other purpose than to be a massive hint of his return. And as it turns out, this isn't the only hint, there's more. Let's jump to December 11th, 2018. Exactly one year after the Doomsday Heist came out, we got the Arena War update. Although overall this update has nothing to do with Clifford, if we look very closely, and I mean very closely, we can find some strange runes on some of the Arena maps. These runes are identical to the ones found around Avon's missile silo. This particular pattern here is the exact same as the one found on the back of every Avon clone. Quite strange, right? Well, there's more. Let's fast forward to December 12th, 2019. Exactly two years after the Doomsday Heist came out, we got the Casino update. And with it came this pretty strange prep mission that has you stealing Volt lasers from a small army of Avon clones. Lester's dialogue on this mission suggests that these clones work on their own volition. They don't seem to need Clifford's direct influence to operate, although this seems to make them almost like husks who don't have any direction. However, they are quite clearly up to something, but what that something is isn't known. Lester seems to be strangely unbothered by it, especially considering all that crap he went through with these guys. But if he's not panicking, then I guess it's not that big of a deal. Not yet, at least. Let's fast forward once again to July 20th, 2021. Over three and a half years after the Doomsday Heist came out, we got the Tuners update. With it came a mission called the Agency Deal, which has you raiding an IAA facility. It's strange how despite us literally working with them all that time ago, we're now raiding and killing a bunch of them. The protagonist doesn't seem to have any morals. They'll rob just about anyone. Anyway, if you were to make a detour from the mission objective and go to the upper levels, you'll find a locked door. If you look through the window, you'll see the corpse of an Avon juggernaut laying on a table, which confirms that the IAA is still investigating these clones, even after all this time. That's three separate references to Clifford spread across the span of three and a half years. 
In hindsight, looking back at all these hints we got, it's pretty obvious that all of this was implying Clifford's return. And wouldn't you know it, just over a year later, and over four and a half years since we first saw him, we got the Criminal Enterprises update. This update finally saw the return of Clifford in the six story-based missions. The first mission starts off with the protagonist being hired as a field agent by the IAA. And I know it's confusing. We worked with them at first, but then we raided and killed a bunch of them, and now we're working for them again. Try not to think about it too much. We were recruited by the IAA to solve an issue with the gas prices being high. The IAA have reason to believe that the prices are being purposely inflated to benefit someone. Our job is to find who that someone is and stop them. Pretty straightforward. The main suspects are the Duggans, who are a corrupt family of petrochemical magnates who are quite well known for their criminal exploits. They're the same people who caused all of the hassle at the Diamond Casino. Being in the petrol industry, they would benefit greatly from the inflated price of gas, which makes them the most likely suspect. The first place we check is Mason Duggan's apartment, as he happens to be the owner of Los Santos State Gas Company. After breaking into his house and hacking his computer, we find out that the Duggans are planning to buy something from the FIB, but what that something is isn't known yet. The protagonist is ordered to go and snatch these items from the FIB headquarters and one of their warehouses before they're sold off to the Duggans. After dropping the items off, we're told that the FIB are on very high alert due to our recent investigations. Our next objective is to hack into a couple of FIB drones and take out the person piloting them. We track them down to a small dingy hotel, but it turns out to be a trap. We end up getting drugged and thrown into the back of a van with a ticking bomb, which we have to promptly defuse and deliver back to the agency for evidence. After this, we're ordered to rescue a fellow field agent called Agent Johnson. She infiltrated the Duggan crime family and managed to gather some crucial information. Unfortunately, however, she got found out and is presumably being held captive by the Duggans. Our job, as you could probably guess, is to figure out what happened and save her. After doing so, she tells us some vital info about this whole operation. The Duggans are using some sort of next-gen computer software to spike the price of gas. This program is exploiting the back doors of many corporations, being able to manipulate every aspect of the global oil market to their advantage. According to Agent Johnson, the Duggans are still looking to purchase more tech from the FIB, which would make things a hell of a lot worse than they are already. So our next objective is to intercept these shipments to impede their progress. Upon investigation of these shipments, it's confirmed that the program that's being used to spike the price of gas is actually the one and only Clifford. The same program that was only moments away from destroying civilization as we know it. It seems Lester was right about him coming back after all. Interestingly, there's an unused model that was added that resembles a damaged and rusted hard drive, which is literally identical to the one found around Avon's neck all that time ago. It seems that the FIB somehow managed to recover this hard drive as well as other loose bits of tech created by Clifford before the IAA could, which they then put up for sale to the highest bidder. As put by Agent ELP, they really have no idea what they're playing with. The Duggans try once again to purchase the final parts they need from the FIB to build Clifford. However, we manage to interrupt their deal in the nick of time. We assassinate Mason Duggan and recover the remaining evidence of Clifford, which stops this whole ordeal in his tracks. With that crisis averted, the only thing left to do now is to make sure that this sort of thing never happens again. Your last and final task is to return to Avon's missile silo and destroy all remaining evidence of Clifford once and for all. You enter the silo, get spooked by some juggernauts, restore the power and begin deleting all traces of Clifford from the servers. Of course, things go south and the protagonist trips the alarm. This causes every juggernaut in the facility to switch to search and destroy mode. This also alerts the Avon clones who are still operating by themselves and they make their way over. The protagonist fights through them and deletes whatever evidence they can. Agent ULP then makes a strange request. He asks us to create a copy of Clifford on our phone and deliver it to him at the IAA facility. You would have thought that this would be the last thing we would do. We're literally here to destroy all evidence of Clifford, and yet we're being told to make copies, but he assures us that it's all for the greater good. They'll be able to readjust the price of gas, and return things to how they were. The copy will be safely locked away, in the hands of the good guys. We oblige, and fight our way out of the silo. We hand in the single most dangerous hard drive in the world to the IAA, and with that we are dismissed as a field agent, and our job is complete. So that's pretty much it, right? Clifford made a return, so we killed him. Again. He's safely secure with the good guys. Although this does seem like the end of Clifford's story, I personally think that it's going to continue. Although admittedly, there isn't really any solid proof of this at all. I just find it weird from a story perspective how Rockstar would decide to keep this one singular copy of Clifford alive, rather than just destroy him once and for all. It's kind of like they're setting something up for another update, or at the very least, leaving the door open for one. Kind of like what happened at the end of Doomsday. If we pay attention to the dialogue on the final mission, it becomes pretty obvious that the agency is going to use Clifford, not just lock him away. I don't think I need to tell you why using Clifford in any way is a terrible idea, but to be honest, I guess we should trust them. Yeah, they're not exactly angels, but they did fight tooth and nail with us just to take Clifford down, and they by far know the most about him out of anyone. If Clifford was going to be stored anywhere, it would be the safest with them. 
Or would it be? We've already seen firsthand how it's relatively easy to break into the IAA facilities, with Bogdan and even us managing to do it. It's not too much of a stretch to assume the FIB or even another organisation altogether could raid the facility and steal Clifford. Hell, it could even be an inside job, involving sleight of hand. They're not exactly short on corrupt agents after all, and I know this is getting pretty far into theory territory now. But hey, my theory from three years ago turned out to be somewhat correct, so maybe I could get this one right too. Keep an eye out. I don't think this is the last we're going to see of Clifford. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something new about this very, very confusing law of GTA 5. I'll see you later.